Now there's a multitude of reasons that I could give you as to why a crispy ball of rice stuffed with meat is good, but I'd rather just show you. Okay, so let me start off by saying if the video quality or image looks different at all, it's because my Canon 5D Mark IV hit the ground. Yeah, I know, we visited this subject before. My tripod collapsed while I was filming this, and yeah, long story short, it wouldn't turn on. It's being repaired, it's being looked at. Hopefully I just get a new one, to be honest with you. I've got the warranty, thankfully. Anyway, I had to rent a Mark III because uh, they didn't have a Mark IV, and look. <sighs> Onigiri is essentially a rice ball that's typically stuffed with something, some sort of meat, like chicken or pork or whatever. I chose pork belly because, you know. Now there's two ways you can have onigiri. You could have a typical onigiri, just stuffed rice ball, you know, patted down and that's it. Or you can have it crisped up. When you do that, it would be considered yaki onigiri. But I'll be showing you both ways. Let's just, let's just make this, shall we? Okay, so this is honestly an incredibly straightforward and simple technique. Since we're stuffing this pork belly, let's start by cooking it. Wow, who saw that coming? First thing, season a one and a half pound or 680 gram skinless pork belly with salt and a small pinch of brown sugar on both sides. Now you can cook this one of two ways. You can either vac it and drop it in a sous vide bath at 70 degrees Celsius for eight hours, or you can set it on a baking sheet fitted with a wire rack and roast it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, then lower the oven temperature to 325 Fahrenheit or 162 Celsius and let it cook for another hour and 15. Now while that's cooking, make sure you have pre-cooked sushi rice ready to go. Since I'm assuming you probably don't, then go ahead and start by washing your sushi rice. Some of you know, I work in a fine dining Japanese restaurant. If any of the sushi chefs found out that I wasn't washing my rice right now, they'd make sashimi on my damn legs. So please, for my own safety, and for the sake of your delicious onigiri, please wash your rice. Soak the rice in water for about 15 minutes, then rinse it, then drain it, and rinse it, and drain it, and rinse it until it's nice and clear. Then just cook the rice in a rice cooker or according to the rice maker's directions in a pot. Then just let it cool down enough to handle before making your own nigiri. Once your belly is cooked, let it cool down a bit and then cut it into half inch cubes. See, this is why this is a great recipe to get started a day or two ahead of time if you roll like that. Now heat a large pan or a pot with a tablespoon of neutral high heat oil over medium high heat. Now once it's very hot, and when I say hot, I mean hot, add your cubed belly to avoid overcrowding and just sear until you get nice golden brown sides without rendering out too much of the fat. You know, you want some of that juiciness left. Now, once those cubes are nicely brown, deglaze the pan with two tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of mirin. Reduce that by half and add one bunch worth of thinly sliced green onion tops. You know, just the green part. Mix that in and your filling is ready. Now, wet your hands in some water to prevent the rice from sticking. Take roughly half a cup or 95 grams of cooked rice that's ideally still, you know, slightly warm so it's easy to maneuver. Y you get it. You want to be able to maneuver it. Now, form it into a thick patty with a small deck in the center, place some of the meat in that center without overstuffing, and carefully close up the hole with the edges of the rice and gently, yet firmly, press your onigiri together. Now, I prefer to shape these into balls because it's way easier, but it's more traditional to shape them into triangles. You know, it's up to you. Balls are easier. Now, once you have all your onigiris, you can stop here and just add some sesame seeds on top and enjoy as is, you know, dip it in yuzu aioli. But if you want to make these into yaki onigiris, and I know you guys are going to call me out on the way I'm pronouncing this. I know it's not 100% right, but you know what? I, I'm just doing me, all right? Then in order to do that, you're simply going to add enough oil to completely coat the bottom of a medium-sized pan Heat the pan over medium high heat until extremely hot. Then add in the balls and sear till brown and crispy, about two to three minutes. Flip and sear the other side. Now, if your onigiri fall apart at this stage, then that means that they likely weren't pressed together enough or they were handled way too rough when crisping. So, you know, keep all that stuff in mind. And now you're done. Serve these with an aioli or teriyaki style glaze, you know, whatever floats your boat. Now, I know people are going to be asking, well, what side is best for onigiri? And I think a side of beef. <laughs> All right, guys, and that is it. So, onigiri. I'd like to say more, but I've got to run, got to take care of this camera stuff. So, a little bit of a shorter video, there'll be more in the next upcoming one. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.